I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. It's no secret that I'm a fan and avid user of tank automation. For all my saltwater tanks, tank automation is a given, not an option, regardless of tank size. For example, my 13.5 gallon Fluval Evo had pieces of tank automation on it. And while I'm a tank automation junkie, there are pieces of tank automation that I don't touch. Now that's a story for another episode. Today I'm talking to you about what's on my must automate list for your saltwater tank. First up on my must automate list, chillers and heaters. These devices have the potential to ruin your aquarium very quickly. Nearly every heater and chiller on the market has a built-in thermostat, and even so, I still add on a piece of tank automation in the form of a temperature controller. Why? Redundancy. Most of the heater and chiller horror stories I hear about involve a heater or chiller getting stuck on. By adding on that temperature controller in addition to the built-in thermostat, you're massively reducing the risk of winter coming to your tank or your tank turning into a hot tub. Pro tip, most chillers draw more power than heaters, so you'll need a heavier duty temperature controller. My go-to temperature controller for chillers is either a Ranco temperature controller or Neptune Systems Apex. If you go the Apex route, keep in mind Neptune Systems recommends a maximum power draw of 15 amps per energy bar or seven amps per outlet. The power draw issue can also come into play with big heaters above 1,000 watts. For most of you, your tanks don't need that much power. Even on a smaller system like this 40 gallon tank, I'm still going to plug the heater into an apex or a temperature controller. And for smaller heaters not plugged into an apex, I prefer the JBJ True Temp controller. Having redundancy on my heaters despite the tank size is a must for me. Don't skip on the temperature controller, just do it. Next up on my must automate list, automatic top off systems, also known as ATOs. But can't you just top off your tank manually every day or every other day? You could, and it's not worth the effort or the risk, especially on small or even typical sized aquariums. On this 40 gallon tank like this one, if I don't top it off for several days, the salinity can rise dramatically. On typical sized tanks, 75 to 180 gallons, these tanks have smaller sumps and the return box section of the sump doesn't hold much water. If you forget to top off your tank, then the water level in the return box drops below the intake of your return pump, causing your return pump to run dry. A return pump run and dry will burn up and stop, which means the heartbeat of your tank is now lost. Spend the money and get yourself an ATO. I used a Tenzi Osmolator for years and it always worked well for me. Once Neptune Systems came out with their ATO, and given the fact that all my tanks have apexes on them, I now mainly use a Neptune ATO as I can see if the ATO is running through Apex Fusion. Verifying that the pump is running without having the client check the pump is very useful. It's also nice for me to verify that my own ATO is running as I have it on my tank as well. Both of these ATO systems have multiple layers of backups built in, so I currently don't use any other type of ATO. Next up, dosers, and there's an exception to the must automate rule here. Nano tanks. These tanks need a small amount of supplementation, so dosing by hand can work. Say you're dosing 10 milliliters of alkalinity a day. You're fine to dose it by hand. Now personally, I'd still automate it though, as stability in a saltwater tank sure helps, and by dosing small amounts throughout the day versus once a day or even every couple days, you'll help your little tank be a shining star. Plus, you can forget having to explain to your tank sitter how to dose your tank, but not ruin everything in your tank. For larger systems that have larger dosing demands, automating your dosing helps spread out the amount dosed over the course of the day. This helps avoid parameter swings. And if you have to dose a large amount of supplement, if you dump it into your tank all at once, that supplement can land on a coral. Corals and fish don't like that. Just automate your dosing. Pro tip, calcium reactors are always automated with a pH controller, as you're not going to manually check the pH of the water in the reactor, and then turn on and off a CO2 solenoid based on what you find. Dosing pump and calcium reactor selection is a big topic, and I'll leave that for a future video. That's what's on my list of must automate for my tanks, and all my tanks have at least those things automated. I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.